I feel more empowered right in this moment than I have felt probably in my entire life because I've never gotten to tell my story. I've never gotten to be brutally honest. I've never gotten to throw it all out there. And it's like a weight that's come off my, my chest. Who do you think baked this, Mom? I was an overachiever. I'm settling into my natural groove now. People think that I don't know that I have problems. Hayden Penetier has been entertaining audiences for nearly three decades. And there's no question, the 32-year-old actress, singer, activist, and mother is enjoying an incredibly successful career. One that began back in the early 90s, when Hayden was just a child. I was 11 months old when I did my first commercial, play school toy train commercial. I was actually eight months old when I started baby modeling and I did like 50 commercials up until four years old when I was on a soap opera. Won't you come watch, Mommy? Well, you bet I will. Then come right now. Hayden continued to land roles in both TV shows and films, including a particularly memorable performance in the hit 2000 movie, Remember the Titans. But you're still weak on the left side. We're not weak on the left side. We just got to work hard on the left side. That's all. It's not the problem. But as she got older, Hayden says she wasn't always surrounded by people looking out for her best interests. Being a child actor is, it's horrible. I would never wish it on my worst enemy. Um, it's, it's full of people who who want things from you who need things from you and I mean I'll give you an example I had somebody that was supposed to I was supposed to work with I was working with who represented me and um, she introduced me at 15 years old to the happy pill and I had absolutely no idea at that time what you know really drugs were or addiction was and she would give me this happy pill before I walked down um, the red carpet so that I would be peppy and into the interviews and I had no idea what door that would open for me you know when it came to addiction. Probably when I was 13 I think there were several parties that I went to that I was that I was served alcohol no problem. I didn't even ask for it. It was just, you know, offered and the people that I was with who were again supposed to be protecting me um, were hammered and drunk and I was and it was two o'clock in the morning and I was in a club and I was going, I'm not supposed to be here, you know. This is not a place for, for me. But at that age, I also felt like I was so much older, I didn't get a chance to be a kid. Um, but I did have like a life outside of that and they weren't doing that, my friends weren't doing that and I was trying to fit into that world and it was so different and I, yeah, I knew, I knew probably about 12, 13 years old, um, that I was just, I, I, this was too much for any kid. There were a lot of tears. There were a lot of tears and I, then I felt I was having an identity crisis because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know which world I fit into. And at that time, I didn't fit into any world. I think it was just my social anxiety that really, really got me. And I saw other people around me um, self-medicate through things like that with alcohol. And so you try it and it works or you think it works and then it gets out of hand and out of control, but that's a, a habit that, that formed for me. As I got older, it became something that I almost couldn't live without. In December 2014, at the age of 25, Hayden gave birth to her daughter Kaya with then fiance, heavyweight champion boxer Vladimir Klitschko. While Hayden continued to struggle with her addiction, she also began suffering from postpartum depression. 
after I had my daughter and I, and I went through postpartum, which, you know, I had no idea where my addiction started and postpartum started and they where they where they connected I didn't know where one one started and one ended and I was just self-medicating never even thought about going to a doctor never thought about you know getting on antidepressants or anything like that I just it was me in the bottle it was alcohol and it was opiates it became opiates um, and there is a an, uh, an epidemic, as you know, um, an opiate epidemic, and uh, it's really bringing, taking people out. But it makes you feel good, and you're like grasping for anything, anything to make you feel happy, to make you feel happy, even, and it's usually just for a moment, and then all of a sudden, you're sad again, and you're not just sad, but you're 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 feeling worse than you even did before, and it just becomes this horrible cycle, you know, this cycle of just self-destruction. I was on Nashville for six years, and they were really tough years, and it was it's just such a hard habit to break when because I was, I was uh, stuck on this show f for 10 months out of the year, 12 to 20 hours a day, playing this very dramatic character that was constantly going through the same things that I was going through in real life. I struggle with depression, and I'm trying, trying to get it under control. So when I got home, I didn't have a chance to deal with what I was really going uh, through. I got myself, you know, to treatment. I finally made that call and said, I need help. I need help, I need to go somewhere. Um, and I've been several places and every place, you know, I, I, I took something from and would get a little bit better and would slide back down, get a little bit better. Um, and then finally I realized, I think, what, what was at the, the core of it was this unresolved trauma. I found a place that literally ripped me open and, um, and then put me back together again. And I had to unpack everything and all these memories that came up that I didn't even remember that were suppressed. I remember sitting there and, and um, at, at, the, at the treatment facility and going, I have, I feel content for the first time and I have the ability to choose to laugh today, to choose to smile today, to choose to have fun today. And it slowly got better and better and better and better and um, I realized that that was worth fighting for, not just for myself, but for my, my daughter, for, um, for other people to be able to tell them, you know, I promise you that there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, and it takes time, which most addicts are not patient. We want, you know, right away instant gratification. Um, but with patience and time and around the right, the right team of people, you can get there. Hayden and Vladimir's relationship ended in 2018. With Hayden needing to focus on her mental health and sobriety, the decision was made that Kaya should primarily live with Vladimir in Europe. Well, my daughter went to live in Ukraine, um, between Ukraine and Germany, um, and I got to go over and, and see her as much as I wanted often, but I knew that she, that the best thing that I could do the hardest thing that I could do, the best thing that I could do for my daughter was to make sure that she was okay and take care of myself um, and make sure that I could be, you know, a good mom. 
her, so that sometimes means you have to let him, let him go, and let him have. She has a beautiful um, life, and I was just with her, and she's an amazing child, and she's smart, and she's funny, and she, for whatever reason, still loves me. The Russian military has begun a brutal assault on the people of Ukraine. Without provocation, <clears throat> without justification, without necessity, this is a premeditated attack. This past February, Russian military forces invaded Ukraine. Hayden's first thoughts were of the safety of her daughter, as well as Vladimir and his brother Vitaly, who is the mayor of Kyiv, the country's capital. I ran to my, my child. She's not in Ukraine. Um, she's safe. Um, but I felt like I needed to get to her immediately um, and just see how she was processing things. And I wanted her to know that I, I was there for her. I was panicking for the first uh, little while going, oh my gosh, what if I, because Vlad and Vitaly are on the ground. They are on the ground fighting for their country, for their freedom. And I, I was thinking, please don't make me have to tell my daughter that her favorite person in the world, that her dad is, is no longer here. I mean, that would just be, I mean, the worst thing, the worst thing that could possibly happen. But if there is anybody who will make it through this, it is that man, so. I created Hoplon International to bring relief and aid directly to Ukrainians on the front lines. I can't continue to sit on the sidelines just watching as this disaster rages on. In March, Hayden founded Hoplon International to help raise critical funding for medical supplies and protective gear for those fighting for their lives on the front lines in Ukraine. I had a lot of calls from friends and people who wanted to donate money to help the war and they didn't know where to donate it to because not all charities uh, do the right thing with the money that's donated. I wanted people to know that every single penny that they donated, whether it was $5 or $1,000, whatever that they could give was going directly to the front lines directly to medical aid, directly to protective gear. Um, it's going straight there. Thank you to Hoplon International for all the help and support that we have received here in Ukraine. Thank you for the med kits and the bulletproof vests that are gonna save our lives. We've been Thank working, you, so you know, hand in hand together. So to hear that he's okay, you know, it's kind of a, it's a relief every time I get to hear his voice or he sends a, a text. After a tough couple of years, Hayden is thankful to be emerging stronger than ever and excited about the future, especially her return to the big screen, where she'll be reprising her role of Kirby Reed in the next installment of the Scream franchise, currently scheduled for a 2023 release. I'm so happy that this is gonna be like my first project back because I have such fond memories of doing Scream 4. And I love the character and I love her 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 sass and and I feel like I I'm coming back and I and I know her so it's a little less intimidating. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I think it's a fabulous moment for me. I'm I am so excited and I feel like I get to start with this blank canvas almost as an actor and was known for certain things but because I got to take that time off I really feel like I do have a blank canvas and um, I can paint whatever I want. Acting's been my life. It's what I love to do and I needed to get back to it but I felt you know so bad about myself sometimes that I, I lost trust in myself. And losing trust in yourself is, um, it's, it's very detrimental, you know? It's very, very hard. And getting that trust back is, um, is even harder. 
Um, and I feel like I've finally gotten that that trust back. And I was like, you know, I, I, I was at the top of the world and I ruined it. You know, I took it for granted and I let it go. And I will never do that again if I ever get to, you know, be back in, in my world that I love working. And the fact that I have gotten this, this opportunity to, you know, work with people and, and to tell my story and to do Scream and be a part of this, this world again, I will never take it for granted again.